Okay, I'm going to hope that my voice holds out. We're going to move to A2. We have two protons. Um, as a matter of fact, let me make sure I read this. It says, some force holds two protons separated vertically by a distance of the Bohr radius. Protons have the same magnitude as, uh, of charge as electrons, except they're positively charged. Imagine you can stand with all your weight on the top proton. How much closer can you push it? Okay. Um, I didn't say this explicitly. Most of you got it. <coughs> but the whole idea is that this bottom proton is on something. So I've got this. I've got P plus, I've got P plus, I hope that's actually visible with this other camera, okay, I've got that, it's separated, they're separated by some distance, which we know we are given is A0, and then, um, so, that's what we have at the beginning, but let's finish reading that, let's read that question a little bit more. It said, some force holds two protons. So, where's that some force? Well, if we're going to put this on a table that can't move, then this some force is some force that's acting right here in this direction. It is a downward force because proton positive charge, proton positive charge, they want to repel one another, and therefore there is some initial force, I, which is going downward. All right, so let's go ahead and draw, once again, these are protons, so they take up no real space, so we're just going to draw it that way for the heck of it. Let's go ahead and draw it like this, and so what do we have? We have an F sub I, which equals excuse me, vector, which is equal to F sub I minus F sub I in the Y hat direction. Okay, what do we know about it? We know that it's in balance. I hope that that camera's recording properly. It's freezing up when I'm looking at it, but we'll see what happens. Okay, um, where was I? F sub I? Okay. All right. Um, but what do I know about this? I know it is in balance with the Coulomb force at a given distance of A0. Therefore, I know that F sub I equals, in magnitude, K. Um, I'll just go ahead and put Q squared here. K, Q squared, because they're each a proton, over A0 squared. And what direction is this? This is in the plus X, uh, plus Y direction, Y. So, I add these two together, I get zero. Therefore, oh, I'm sorry, um, uh, I'll write this FIC. Okay, so this is the initial Coulomb force, the initial Coulomb force. But, that is, I've got some force pushing it down that I don't know what it is. I've got another force, Coulomb force, pushing it up. But I know because it's in equilibrium, I know that they are equal to one another. So, what I really know is that the magnitude of F sub I see if I can, well, I'll, I'll move it over here. I know that the magnitude of F sub I equals K Q squared over A zero squared. And I know, um, well, there, there you go. I already know the direction of it, so this just magnitude. Okay, so we now have the initial position. Now, however, we got something different. Now, we are going to take this, and we are going to... We're going to have the same proton here, same proton here, but now we are standing on top of this, cheering because we are on top of the world, on top of the proton anyway. All right, so now what do we know? This is going to be at some new distance, we'll just call it D, this will be at some new distance D. What do we know about this? Well, we know it is a new equilibrium position, which means the sum of the forces is going to balance is going to be zero. Well, what's my Coulomb force? So I'm gonna I'll go ahead and write this way: F final Coulomb equals same thing, K Q squared, but instead of a zero, it's going to be D squared here. Okay. And what do I know as what's my downward force? Well, my downward force is F sub I, whatever was there to begin with, plus me, um, F sub weight on there, which 
this f sub i and f sub w, we know f sub w is m g. Okay, so then the question is, what is this d? Okay, and here we go. We already have our coordinate system, but I'm going to redraw it here on the same um, on the same thing. So I know I have a downward force in the y hat direction, um, in the negative y hat direction, and I know that its magnitude is mg. And so, what is my m? I'm about 185 pounds. I know that there are is one kilogram per 2.2 pounds. Therefore, I know that this is, I don't know, like, I'm going to just guess it. I'm just going to say 85 kilograms. So I'm 85 kilograms. Okay. Once again, with my drawings and with my strategy, what's my strategy now? My strategy is now to balance out these, the new situation, the forces in the new situation, to balance those out so that I can determine what this D is. So here's everything. Do we know FW? Yes. Do we know FI? Yes. Do we know FFC? Yes. We know all these things. All we need to do is set them equal. So we say F sub I is right up there. It equals K Q squared over A zero squared plus F sub W, which is M G and minus K Q squared over d squared, where I then I took care of the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, I took care of the fact that this is in, that these are in opposite directions. So we know that this is equal to zero, which means therefore we can start to do some algebra on this, and our algebra is, I mean, once again, this is pretty much it, right? All we need now is to just solve this algebraically for d, I sure hope that's recording. It's freezing up from when, as I'm looking at it, but I hope you're at least getting the audio. All right. Um, so what do I have? I have k q squared. Oh, no, let's do it di a different way. Um, let's do it this way. Let us go. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. I'll do it step by step. All right. We're going to go k Q squared over A zero squared plus MG equals KQ squared over D squared. So I'm then going to multiply each side by D squared. So I'm going to put this D squared over here, which leave this one. But then I'm going to take this, this D squared is times everything, and I'm just going to divide by this. So what we end up with is D equals KQ squared over k q squared over a zero squared plus m g and oh i'm sorry this is d squared so this there is d um you guys should take a moment and convince yourself of the units the same way we did that for the earlier problem you guys can do that and you can also do this mathematics you can do you can mess around with this a little bit if you um well, I'll write one more one more step in the manipulation, which I think makes it a touch easier, but whatever. Um, I'm just going to divide or multiply this by 1 over kq squared over, over 1 over kq squared, which means I'm going to have 1 over 1 over a0 squared plus mg over kq squared. And... Um, that's my D, and I'm done. And I just chug away. I got something like, um, I don't remember, about 9 times 10 to the minus 31 meters, which is, I actually, I don't know, I think it's actually technically even smaller than a proton. Um, so, could you actually do this? Or maybe another question you can think about is, what keeps us, I mean, why can't I, if I can squish these two things together, these two protons that are charged, why can't I take this and squish down onto this table and just compress it until these protons are right next to one another? And you should be able to make an argument for that 
based just upon really basic physics. Think pressure instead of force. Um, having said that, um, this there's a, it's actually more complicated than that. There are other forces that keep these protons from getting close to one another. And um, well, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. So um, okay, all right. That is mm, a two.